It's Akito, London-based DJ and producer, and in this week's video, I'm going to show you how to cook up simple yet effective club-ready blends in Ableton like this. My G, welcome. I'll be recreating a simple blend that I released last year. It's a mixture of two tracks, NKC's BTD 150, which was released on her records in 2016, and Cassie's All My Love from her 2013 mixtape Rockabye Baby. I'll link both tracks in the description. I started by importing the audio files into two separate audio tracks. I then locate the first beat of the song. I do this by hitting the space bar and having a little listen. Once I've worked it out, I double click the audio file and switch the warp setting on. This will also create a start marker. I'm going to adjust the positioning of the audio by clicking and pressing down on the left click of the mouse and the shift key simultaneously. I'll then move the audio by dragging the mouse left or right. I'll also zoom in from time to time to get the placement as accurate as possible. Once it looks good, I'll have a listen to double check and move on. Next I'm previewing the audio to see how long a bar is. Counting the beats in my head and looking at the waveform, I know the BPM isn't right. I'll adjust this by speeding up or down the BPM with my mouse. In this case, I'm bumping it up. Usually there is a bit of trial and error, so move the BPM up or down accordingly. Now you can see it sit on the grid comfortably. I'll also turn down the track as the warping affects the volume and to give us more headroom once the two tracks are playing together. I'll also check further up the song to make sure it sits perfectly. Once I'm happy, I'll jump back to the arrangement page. Using the warping feature makes for much easier editing as you can literally copy or delete sections by highlighting the area. This is great for arrangement changes and the effects will also be synchronised as it's playing at the same speed as the master tempo. I heavily advise not to miss this step. Whether you're making blends or even recording artists, it can save you lots and lots of time. Now I'm going to extend the intro so it's a bit more DJ friendly. With more time I'll probably edit it slightly differently but I'll do this for now as it's functional and I can change it later on. To cut the track I will select the area I want then I'll hit command and E simultaneously. This will chop the audio on both sides. Next I will find the first beat and adjust the warp settings for NKC's track. I'm going to put it on solo and zoom in. Luckily this track looks like it's already at 130 BPM, so we don't actually need to adjust it. But I'm going to take no risks and zoom in at different points of the track to make sure it looks absolutely fine. I'll have them play at the same time to make sure that they're in sync. Then I'm going to begin moving and arranging them. I'm also going to drop the volume to this as I don't want it to distort. So the two tracks seem to sit well together. What I'll do now is cut the bass from Cassie as I'm more interested in the vocals and I'll use an NKC track to give this blend the club energy I'm after. I'll 
<laughs> put it on the wrong track, don't watch that. Cutting out a big portion of the bass. I'll do this roughly for now as I can always adjust it later on. I realise the Cassie track is quite short, so I'm going to loop it by simply holding down Alt and left click and then drag and dropping it to extend it out. It works out the same as a copy and paste. I just find it faster and more intuitive. Now I'm going to add a bit of reverb to the Cassie track to try and make it blend a bit better. I'll also do this roughly as it can be adjusted or automated at any time in the future. Now I'm going to start arranging parts of the NKC track. I'll cut sections by selecting them, then splitting the audio by hitting Command and E together. When copying sections over, I'll hit the left click on my mouse again. Then I'll also have Alt push down, then drag and drop as I wish. The handy thing with working within the grid is that not only can you copy and paste huge chunks, you can also zoom in and work into more intricate details. Splitting the audio then double clicking it will allow you to use the warping features on the individual bits of audio. I'll reverse this clip just before the main beat kicks in as an example. To stop any annoying clicks and pops I'll also add volume fades to the clips. The grid also makes it easy to select and delete parts you don't want. You can simply deactivate clips by hitting zero. This is great for trying things out quickly and non-destructively. I usually tend to mess about and try different chops and arrangements. Experiment and see what works and what doesn't and make little edits here and there along the track to try and keep it interesting. Like 18 
Next, I'm gonna turn down the music as I can see it's clipping. I'll also add a compressor and limiter to the master. I'm gonna compress and limit the music very slightly just to try and glue it together slightly better and bring up the overall volume so it sits well alongside the other music in my DJ set. Once I've done that, have a quick listen, then refine and adjust any volumes and EQ. We got the low battery. Tired. Just to keep the blend neat, I'll add a little fade to the drum track as Cassie's tune finishes, just to keep it smooth. In the export setting, I'm gonna bounce it out as a WAV file. You can export it as MP3 as well if you want. In the words of Young Isfan, You do you, my G. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you want to see more in the future, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell below. Until next time, see you soon.